right, let's get into our next uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. Now, before the president went to the United Kingdom, there were talks about a possible cabinet reshuffle. Now the president is back. Yes, he is. And there are speculations that he may embark on portfolio swaps for some ministers while others are shown the way out. Mm -hmm. But will President Muhammad Buhari actually make that move anytime soon? Well, that's the big question everyone is asking, anticipating what's going to happen. Now, joining us in the studio to discuss this is a political analyst, Dr. G.D. Johnson. You're welcome to the program. It's nice a pleasure to, to be with you this morning. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Thanks for mm -hmm. having me. We saw that uh, when the president came into power, Swan in, in, in 2015, it took him so long to come up with the ministers, and there were lots of expectations, mm -hmm. high hopes from Nigerians. He has the magic wand to change things and all of that two years now and people are now calling for cabinet reshuffle what is your assessment of ministers general on the overview before we go into mm. the specifics well it's 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 important to note that um, when a team is not winning as it's supposed to win there's the need for you to inject new blood and to 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 reinvigorate the team uh, um, first and foremost one of the challenges of this present administration mm. was that it took a while before the cabinet could be put in place. Two, people had expectation that it would not have to do with the way we have been doing it in the past and bringing in um, politicians and not having too many technocrats handling mm -hmm. different ministries. However, you know, what we had is more or less like the past former governors and um, former senators and people in the political class uh, mm. clearly dominated the the composition of of the cabinet of the cabinet uh, and as a result of that people started questioning from the from the from the onset now two years down the line if you have to do an overview of the performance of the performance of mm. of the ministers um, you you agree with those that have clamored and like in your opening monologue you clearly pointed out that before the president went for his medical treatment mm. there were there were yeah, these there were insinuations that exactly. then the president is about to make cabinet cabinet reshuffle and if you could recall yesterday the president received the report of even the secretary of the cabinet yes. the secretary of the federal government the secretary of the cabinet concerning his involvement in corruption i think if this administration wants to rebound and to rebound. There's a need for um, an evaluation of mm -hmm. all the ministers. And if there's a need for them to change um, some ministers, there, there, there should be need to. Let's take, the issue. Yeah. Let's, let's, let, uh -huh. let's take it one by one. Yes. Now, let's look at the issue of ASU. Mm -hmm. um, if I were to be in the position of the president, I'll put to question the education minister and the minister of labor and productivity in terms of their level of involvement and engagement in ensuring that this issue did not drag. Because once the president puts the cabinet in place, the president cannot micromanage. Now, what sometimes what we expect from president or governor is to micromanage the ministry. Because once the president has appointed a minister or a governor has appointed a commissioner, mm -hmm. he is expecting the commissioner to function because all his power, all his authority has been delegated to that let, minister. Let, let, me, let me take you back a little. Well, the, the question then is, is there a link between the delay six months after Buhari uh, became president? He picked his ministers. He didn't have a cabinet in place. And he had made the statement that, look, this government can actually function without having a cabinet in place. And then you get, um, you know, uh, your ministers, you, you nominate them. Then there is the sore issue of not having portfolios attached uh, to the nominees, it, uh, aren't all of these really? I mean, uh, uh, I a way of us, you know, b just shooting yourself in the foot. You see, first and foremost, we need to, we need to, we need to. That's area we need to restructure. Mm -hmm. That when you are sending the nominee, and that's area the National Assembly ought to have looked into. Uh, that uh, when you are sending the review this, now, that when, they are looking when, at. When, yes. when, when, when you are sending nominees to us, please attach the portfolio so that we can screen the person based on that. Mm -hmm. Now, if they nominate somebody for a post in the United States of America and not that climb. You know, mm -hmm. he, before me, by the time uh, Theresa May won it, we all knew that Boris Johnson would be the minister mm -hmm. of, uh, 
of, of foreign, foreign affairs, foreign affairs. Secretary of foreign mm -hmm. affairs. So it's important. Now to come to the issue of the delay, we say something in our local parlance. Delay is dangerous. Mm -hmm. It is it, very time's wait for nobody. Whatever time you have lost, you you've lost it. You can't you can't you can't gain it. You can't gain it back. And you know what that has cost us? Mm -hmm. It has cost budget delays because the cabinet were not in place. That you know. For, successively after every budget after budget here we have delays because that six month delay that the ministers that will have been in place to put in the process with their estimate to do the costing and the rest mm -hmm. but had, had an effect and mm -hmm. that effect is still is still till now and for anybody to think that oh you know what i can run without a cabinet is is absolutely impossible even god is not running this world <laughs> alone he has angels even jesus christ had 12 disciples even a prophet Muhammad Salam Ali wa Salam, may the peace of the Almighty be upon him, had what is called Isabe. So, mm. so you see, sometimes one of our problems in Nigeria is that we build a cult hero around leadership. We build a cult hero around leadership. We think it is one individual that will solve our problem. But it is institution. It is institutions that solve problems. Mm. The constitution makes a provision for a cabinet, for a cabinet to be in place to help the president in running the administration. And for the first six months, some people are saying he does not need it. And now we are seeing the effect of it. Mm. Mm. All right, now, let, let's look at some of the ministers and all of that. Yeah. Now, with this call now, it, it, it goes a long way to show that Nigerians are not satisfied by the mm -hmm. services they're getting from the ministers. Now, at the inception of this administration, we saw ministers bobbling with promises that we're going to do this from the Ministry of Agriculture, from the Ministry of Power and Housing, from the Ministry of uh, uh, Science and Technology. Everybody was really bobbling, petroleum. But now we don't hear ministers say anything again like the fire has burnt out exactly the fire has burnt out I, is it that they don't have the free hand to work there as mm. they're supposed now, to we will, i will not completely put the blame on the ministers okay um partly the state of health of the president affects it mm. you see when something is wrong with the head mm. something is wrong with the entire body that's the truth right. when something why do you think that the most functional organ in the human body the sensory organs are put where Mm. In the head, your eyes, your nose, mm. your ears, mm. your mouth, and, and in your, your head. And your now, brain. if something is wrong with the head, something is wrong with the entire body. Now, a situation whereby the head is not on ground as a result of health reasons. Mm. Are you getting my point? Mm. It incapacitates the ability of other parts of the body to function. But in the but case, in the case, really, in the case yes. where in the case where budgets have been allocated and approved, mm -hmm. matching orders have been given, do they need the president every day to be on the ground? Do yeah. man, day they need, day. You need approvals for whatever you do. You need okay, let me give you an example. The the report on NIA mm. and the SGF mm. that was meant to be presented to the president the day after I traveled, was just presented by the vice president yesterday. Couldn't he have acted on it? You know, every activity of the state was on suspension. That's an indication. Doesn't that, that speak some to some aspect of governance that were on suspension? Doesn't that speak president... to what you just said about strengthening institutions and exactly. systems so exactly. that it does not depend does, on does not any depend one on person? Individual. But the way we build this thing is that, oh, you know what? One individual will solve our problem. And if you look at it, I love using this illustration. I love it. Whether in the Christian faith or in the Islamic faith, if you look at it, Prophet Muhammad came, he built an institution. 2000, less than 2,000 years after he's gone, the institution is still growing. Jesus Christ, son of living God, came, he built an institution. That institution is still growing. It was not about their personality. It was about institution. It, it's about system. Mm -hmm. But in Africa, you know what? We look at individual, that one individual will solve our problem. There is no way, even if the president is there for the next 20 years, he cannot solve all the problem of Nigeria. And that's why I'm against geographical restructuring I'm, I'm for institutional restructuring mm. because the cabinet is meant to to do some certain things with or without the president mm. the cabinet is empowered to say something or to let Nigeria know if something is wrong okay so as some ministers overburdened you have some that have three key ministries under their uh, <laughs> uh, under their watch you have some w with two See, is that part of the problem why we're not getting the kind of results that we're expecting? I, I, I think it has to do with bureaucracy. That's not to do with the ministries. Okay. In actual sense, our, minist our, our ministries and departments are bloated. You have agencies uh, doing overlapping right. functions mm -hmm. because in America, how many cabinets do you have? Mm -hmm. Not more than 13. In actual sense, it used to be 12. It was because of 9 11 that led to the creation of 
Homeland Security. Homeland Security Are you yeah. getting me? So it's mm. not more than 12. It's not more than 12. So mm. why, 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 why should it? For as far as, it's because we break it down. What's the difference between transportation and aviation? Why yeah. can't transportation and aviation be together? Be one. Are, are you with me? But why, works, why, why, works why, housing why, and power, these work, are key, works key and house, works, Why can't works and housing be together? Why work and housing and power? Why can't it be? It's about infrastructure. Mm. It's not about infrastructure. So why can't we call it Ministry of probably, okay, if you have energy, mm. Ministry of Energy, it takes care of petroleum, Niger Delta. You know, we like mm. creating buffer zones. <laughs> you know that, that, to, you know. To, we can to democratize posts exactly to so that and because of uh, each state in the federation must have a minister by mm. virtue of the council mm. and some of us have argued there are six geopolitical zones why don't we have 12 ministries and let two geopolitical zones come with two ministers mm. and two ministers and then other part of we have 12 ministers 12 advisors, and then that solves the problem. Another state, you, you balance it, and mm. then it will be manageable. How do you think that in a cabinet of more than 60 people, you have meaningful discussion? I'm throwing mm. it to you. Mm. Mm -hmm. That you have meaningful discussion is over bloated. And of course, Oshibajo has said hard work is uh, the prerequisite for belonging to the Federal Executive Council. How hard working are these ministers? From where you are standing, when you look at all of it, you know, their the performance and, and what have you. Do you see people who, uh, like we expected from day one, we, you know, hit the ground running? Uh, well, um, you see, like I said, the circumstances in which some of them, that's why I said I'm not putting the blame totally, in which they found themselves mm. incapacitated. Them. If the vice president could not function as acting president in some certain capacity in implementing the report, mm. in, you know, until the president comes, you will know you know that there, there, there is. And if the president really wants to move, he needs to really delegate okay. and assign responsibility. Mm. Square pegs in, in square exactly. holes. Or yeah, is but it round pegs in round holes? No, or triangle no. pegs in triangle holes. Yeah. Now, we're looking at the time to uh, go for the news out there, but let me ask this question. The point there is the president has just been out for 100, 100 and Three just days. about yeah. roughly 100 days, as the case may be. Before then, he was around. And even at the time he was around, we're still looking at the minister, Nigerians were still looking at the ministers and saying, OK, are we getting what we're supposed to get from these people? Now, in a situation where a technical ministry like power, for instance, you have a lawyer there. Do you rec do you do you tag that as a round peg in a round hole? Now, uh, well, um, you know, they call the. We call lawyers the learned one. <laughs> and I tell them that we are the knowledgeable one. <laughs> Journalists are the knowledgeable exactly. one. They are the learned one. We are the knowledgeable one. Um, you see, some of the challenges we have in Nigeria is that we believe that oh, it must be a medical doctor that should be the head of Federal Ministry of Health. You see, what is the whole essence of education? Education is to prepare you to take decisions. What do ministers do is to take decisions. Is to take decisions. So if you are saying that oh, a lawyer is not qualified to be a minister of power, then we say president is not qualified except he's, he's, he has MSc or BSc or yeah, PhD but how do you, in political how science do you or take, leadership. How do you take the right decision yeah. if you're not vast in that uh, particular field, especially when it comes to um, you know highly specialized areas? Let, let me take the example which you are talking about. Yes. You can't take it away that um, when the minister of Minds and I mean, the Minister of Power Works and Housing was in Lagos. Lagos has one of the best independent power projects in Lagos. Mm. So for me, so that clamor, I don't, I don't usually take that out. Okay. You must be a lawyer, must be this. Let me, let me, let me, let me give you this. The president, I read poll science that came up with the League of Nations, couldn't convince the Congress. Woodrow Wilson couldn't con mm. He read poll science. He came up with the idea of League, League of Nations. He couldn't convince the American Congress to join the League of Nations. That was what led to the collapse of League of Nations. So mm. we shouldn't be taking, we shouldn't be taking. Okay, look at um, housing resources in America. It's headed by a surgeon. Um, what's yeah. the name of this black man, uh, this black ben, surgeon? Um, ben, ben Carson. Ben, ben Carson. Carson. Yeah. Ben, in Nigeria, people have said, why would you take Ben Carson to housing? To housing for, for we shouldn't come to, to, you see people heading oil companies, reading classic, reading. So it's not a function of your degree. Sometimes mm. you attach so many things to certification mm. and qualification. No, it's not a function of degree. It's a function of your ability to lead, to lead. And, 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 and that 
um, it's, it's, it's not the problem as far as I am concerned, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a doctor, mm -hmm. whether you're a banker, as long as you have demonstrated the capacity for leadership. How, much, you know, power, you have how much power should the president, uh, the, the, who is the principal here, actually cede to his ministers in order for them to actually perform optimally? Uh, you, you see, you, you must trust. You know, one of the challenges of this administration, let me put it across, mm -hmm. you recall that before the president left, you know, some, there were, there were this insinuation that it was becoming more or less impossible for ministers to assess to mm -hmm. see the president is in function is in form of access is in form of in form of trust you see one of the things that the president is, is to trust his ministers once you have picked them are you with me? Mm -hmm. i could understand the mindset of the president coming from the rot of the past are you getting me? and the expectations of nigeria to right the wrongs of the past that oh you know what it's not everybody that is corrupt you've yeah. got to trust people you've got to give people fair chance and i think that one of the challenges of the president is his inability to, to, trust. to trust his mm -hmm. ministers. Wow. The that, fear, that, the fear a, of failure one. in itself yeah, exactly. can that, be that's crippling. A big one. Okay. All right, Dr. J.D. Johnson, let's put you on hold. Uh, okay. we're, we're not through yet. Let's put okay. you on hold and go for the news update. And then uh, we come back. Well, yeah. certainly we've, re we've been receiving uh, uh, reports from parts of the country mm -hmm. talking about the cabinet reshuffle. Yes, indeed. But uh, uh, Dr. Johnson is saying it's not necessarily about what you studied mm -hmm. or all of that it's the ability to lead mm -hmm. so anybody who is minister for power you mustn't be an engineer but oh. we saw when uh, Bath, professor bath naji was there there was there was much difference in well that. we're not saying it the point is is that leadership present in this particular cabinet mm, right now mm, that really is a question mm. if we agree that it's a question of um, the right leadership the ability take to decisions. take the right decisions mm. but what informs the kind of decisions uh, you take i mean if, uh, for example, I mean, I'm, I'm a la I read languages for, <laughs> you know, and I made and I made and I made a minister for health. Mm. Oh my! I okay. need the important thing is to get people who really understand what it takes to deliver on health, whether right. the primary or secondary or tertiary, or tertiary uh, you know, uh, level. Healthcare. So you surround yourself with people who really have the skills. All right. We'll, we'll come guess. back to this to dwell more on other issues as far as this topic is concerned stay with us now it's time for the news update and uh, Ugochi Olibo is already standing by for that Ugochi is all yours now thank you the presidential panel set up to investigate the suspended secretary to the government of the federation Babachiri David Lawal and the director general of the national intelligence agency IOK has submitted his report to president Muhammad Buhari chairman of the panel vice president Emil Shibajo refused to disclose its contents but assured that a detailed report was submitted with full recommendations to the president. State House correspondent Maria, Maria Lashinde reports. On April the 19th, President Muhammad Buhari suspended the secretary to the government of the Federation, Babachir Lawal and Ayoki, the NIA boss, and set up a three-man committee headed by Vice President Yemio Shibajo to investigate alleged infractions against both officials. The Lawal was investigated for allegedly awarding millions of Naira contracts to a company in which he had interest, Global Vision Limited, under the presidential initiative on the North East. While OK was probed on the discovery of large amounts of foreign and local currency found by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission at Apartment 7B in Osborne Towers, Ikoi, Lagos. Mm -hmm. Now Vice President Yemi Oshibajo has submitted the report to President Muhammadu Buhari, but he refuses to disclose the details of the panel's recommendations to journalists. No, how can I tell you what is in the report? I mean, you really want to know what's in this report. You have to wait. You really have to wait. Because the president has to look at the report, study it, and then make his own decisions based on the recommendations. It's a fact-finding uh, committee, as you know, and uh, what our terms of reference were, were to find out, based on the facts that we had available to us, and based on interview of witnesses, what transpired in both cases that were before us. The one involving the uh, Secretary of the Government of the Federation and the other one involving the DGNIA. We have now con we've concluded that, and we've submitted a full report with recommendations to Mr. President. Oshiba just said the whole approach is to ensure that justice is done in the interest of the government and the nation. It's in, it's in the interest of a government and also in the interest of the nation 
that things are done properly, that there is due process, you know, and that uh, you are not unfair in any way. That's, that's, that's the proper thing to do. And you can be sure that we'll do the right thing. He is the one who will, he is the one who will read the recommendations, read the facts of the recommendations, and then make a judgment. In attendance at the presentation of the reports are members of the investigative panel, the National Security Advisor, Babagana Monguno, the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubaka Malami, and Chief of Staff to the President, Abba Kiari. The committee was initially to submit its report to Buhari on May the 8th, but could not do so because the President left the country on May the 7th for London on medical leave. Maria Olashende, TVC News, Abuja. A coalition of civil society groups wants the federal government to ensure that former Petroleum Minister Diziani Alison Madweke is brought back to Nigeria to face corruption and money laundering charges leveled against her. The group in the press briefing explained that despite several allegations against the former minister, she is yet to be prosecuted by the Nigerian government. She has also called the Nigerians to lend their voices to the call in the interest of justice, accountability and good governance. From information available to us as a campaign, we want her back. Let her come and face charges in Nigeria. That's our position as a campaign. Those who are doing the forensic investigation, they are doing it. The Americans are doing so. They are collaborating with agencies. Are, most of this will not be in the public space. But we have responsibility to raise this flag very clear, put it out in such a manner that if you want to argue for her, we are ready for you. We will engage you in any space that you want. Very few, in few days' time, we will be doing a protest to the American embassy, to the British embassy, to demand that she should be brought back to Nigeria to face trial. By virtue of the extradition treaty that, we, that exists between the U.S. and the U.K., extradition treaty of 1931, Nigeria is in a position to file and formally request that this person in question be extradited for trial within the jurisdiction of Nigerian law. And we think that the next step for this government that fights corruption to show that indeed impunity will not be tolerated. Imo State Governor Rucha Sokoracha says those agitating for cessation should desist immediately. Speaking at the occasion of um, handing staff of office to traditional rulers in the state, Governor Kuracha said to members of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, and its supporters that it was not prepared for another civil war. He also used the opportunity to urge traditional rulers to lead the path for development in their areas. And that's the news. Back to you, Mike and Ngozi. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Gucci, for the updates there. And uh, let's get back to our discussion we were talking earlier on about yes. the agitation and call for cabinet reshuffle. A lot of Nigerians have been speaking on this, and uh, we have in the studio Dr. Gide Johnson, and we've been doing justice uh, to this issue. Now, uh, let me come back to you. Ministers in the first place. Are they answerable to Nigerians or they're answerable to the president? To the president. Okay. Yeah, so they, they owe the no explanation to Nigerians they, on they, whatever no, they no, do it's, and it's, how... It's, it's, it's a two-way thing. Okay. First and mm. foremost, um, they are answerable both to the president and to Nigerians. Okay. And because they owe us a responsibility to let us know what, what, what they, 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 they are doing. Okay. And uh, there's no doubt that one culture we have not embraced is the culture of ministers giving either weekly briefings, letting us know what they are doing or they are not doing. And Isn't that the what the um, fact meeting is all about? The weekly the, fact meeting. The, I have given you. I mean, I have told you the, the, the as far as I'm concerned, we need to whittle it down to twelve. Um, what <laughs> meaningful discussion do you think you can have with a sixty? How many hours? By the time thirty-six ministry makes their presentation. Now let's give each ministry 10, 10 minutes. 10, 10 minutes. They don't spend, how many hours do they spend in that fact meeting? It's more mm. or less like a, a talk show. As well. If you have 12 ministers, 12 special advisors, you have meaningful, meaningful deliberations, meaningful discussions, all they go to do is to present memo and get approval for the memo. Mm. That, that, that's and, and it's because the way we have found ourselves. And we need to right. restructure that if mm -hmm. we really want to. To move. Otherwise, we'll come in four years' time and review the performance of the ministers, which in any case is below performance. Yeah. To be, to be.
to maybe, be fair. Maybe that's where the candidate. restructuring has to start from. But let's even talk about the challenge of picking uh, the right people who will run uh, with your vision. Uh, of course, it, I mean, it, it's clear that you cannot know all the people that you want to pick. Uh, I, I recall Oshimajo, the vice president, saying not too long ago uh, that uh, the governor, of, former governor of Lagos State, Bola uh, Ahmed Tinubu, did not really know him but picked him as his attorney general and, uh, and commissioner for justice. And of course, uh, history. Uh, yeah, he, as one of the uh, best that, uh, one of the best. He did In perform In fact, I've advocated well. that issue. So do you, trust your, do you trust your, do you now trust your instincts or how do you begin to pick mm. the you right see, person? You're talking about trust, you, yes. you, you see, that's where the party structure comes in. That's where the party structure. You see, the, 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 the uh, unfortunate thing, mm is that the people that instituted this party in the formation of the cabinet were more or less left out. That's the, that's the reality. That's, that's the reality. You have to trust your party structure. You have to trust your party structure. You have to use the organs of your party mm -hmm. to get the right people. To, to first and foremost, but the know, right people may no, not necessarily no, be politicians. They may not. They may not be. But you see, you, you see. For instance, you, you made mention of Lagos State as regards um, Bola Metinumbu picking Yemi Oshiba. It must have been a recommendation from. We knew somebody somewhere that could get this thing done from you. You don't think that you have the monopoly of knowledge. You've got to rely on people. You've got to trust people. And I told you one of the challenges of this is the ability to trust others in view of what happened in the past. And I, and I think once that issue is dealt with, I'm sure you get the right people to, 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 run, to run the administration. And you pick people based on merit, not on the basis of where they come from. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Some of, you see, people don't have an understanding of this, but it's very clear for us. There are ministers that seize the president on daily basis. Mm -hmm. There are people that seize the president. That's what they call the kitchen cabinet. The kitchen cabinet That's yeah. what they call the kitchen cabinet. You must have diversity. Diversity in terms of your pick. Are you, with me? you must pick people that could be able to look you straight in the eyes and tell you, sir, what you are doing is wrong. These are things that I think that you must not pick people that are, are, are looking for opportunities, political, uh, professional politicians. Mm. And, and, and that has always been the, 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 the challenge. You know, one of the areas we also need to reform in the country said, you must pick somebody, you must, for you to be a minister, you must be sponsored by a political party. Is there in the constitution? Mm. And you must be sponsored by a political party. You, you see, these are areas that we need to look at restructuring so it's that not we can helping build, us. Which, which so that we can build institutions. Mm. For instance, the president can just come to Lagos and pick Mike. Mike, come and be my my my, my minister for for information. And, Nothing wrong with that. And, mm. and you, minister of culture, and can't you look like <laughs> <I'm such culture. laughs> you know? So, so, you so, so that's that's. But you know what? The moment the president picks you or someone that nominates you, they say no, you are not a card carrying member mm. of the party in your mm. local government or in your state, mm. and that is not helping. We need to devoid governors from partisanship. What about federal character? This idea that somebody, you know, whoever you're picking, must represent. You know, I have provided the, the I provided the solution. Is federal mm. character doing us I have provided the solution. Why can't we use geopolitical zone? There are six geopolitical zones. Okay, two people Pick from each. Two ministers so, from you, you each. still have more agitations because but, a lot of people in that geopolitical because for instance, like like the uh, northeast, for instance, I have lots of languages. You go to South South, it's the mm. same thing. It's not as 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 yeah. um, Mike, Mike. It's Mike. not like the Southwest that is almost homogeneous in nature. Mike, let me let me let me let me put that to you. Let's say okay, there are thirty six states. You pick twelve ministers. You pick twelve advisors. That's mm -hmm. twenty four. Is remaining how many? Remaining twelve. Mm -hmm. The twelve you find other things: ministries, department, agencies. You find them. You put them there. Mm -hmm. You see, okay, you you had NNPC. You had these agencies. Mm -hmm. You sort out all of this problem. With that, we are coming. We need to read ourselves of these thirty six member cabinet and with the ministers we still have ministers they are hates minister mm -hmm. of, with their hates mm -hmm. and we are talking about uh lean lean lean, lean uh income yeah, from, resources from for resources yeah. so we need to that's the area we should be looking at restructure mm -hmm. are we comfortable with bicameralism or we should revert back to unicameralism mm -hmm. these are areas that we look about restructure, not about creating states mm -hmm. not about creating local governments because uh, the most okay. state to create the more problems, the more have. issues. All right, All right, we have to leave it there. <laughs> Political analyst, it's been a delight talking with you this morning. Jide Johnson has been our guest.
Hope to see you again. It's a pleasure to be with <laughs> you. Thank you. Hope Thank to you see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning breakfast. Thank you very much. <laughs>